Hello and welcome to Pod Meets World. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin. And this week we're discussing the episode On the Air. They were indeed on the air. This episode originally aired February 10th, 1995, attracting 18.8 million viewers. Hmm. Number one on TV this week, ER. Because again, of course it is. Number one at the box office. Any guesses? 1995. Give you a hint, it's a comedy by somebody I despise. Did you say it was Dumb and Dumber? No, that was, no, a, that was a couple weeks that ago. That was a few weeks ago. I don't think Ace Ventura would have been any... No, it's that. somebody else I despise. Oh. I don't know. It doesn't involve Jim Carrey. Billy Madison. Hmm. Number one on the Billboard charts, Creep by TLC. Hmm. As for notable video games, we have Dos. One. Star Wars Dark Forces released on February 15th. Yeah. Really? That's all Star Wars Dark... You've never played Star Wars Dark Forces, have you? Yes. Justin? Yeah, I haven't. You should play. It's a great game. And on February 16th, Sega had their own little counter to that. Sort of. Sort of. It has a star in it. It's Rice Star. Woo! Okay. Rice Star. It was a thing. Sure was. Alrighty. WWF champion at the time... Any guesses? Any guesses? Is there going to be a fire involved? It was Diesel. Oh man, the fire. It burns so intensely. And it's going to be Diesel for a fucking long time. There's going to be so many fires. How are people going to live? WCW had a champion at the time. Any guesses? Any guesses? Hulk? Hulk. So we start the episode with Alvin Meese having resurrected the John Adams High Patriot Radio. After 10 years of being off the air. And I think everybody preferred it being off the air. Yeah, there might have been a reason why. Mm -hmm. He and Mr. Feeney broadcast the first show, which plays Michael Bolton, Mm -hmm. Perry Como, and um, uh, Minutu? I don't know how you pronounce that. Music at lunch, and all the kids hate it. Because of course they do. Cut the cord! You only gave me a plastic spoon! Uh... You don't like what you hear, get on the air and do better, Mr. Fr- Mr. Turner tells Corey and Sean. The boys quickly get on the air but find themselves constricted by Mr. Feeney's programming notes, which are terrible. Nah, they're school sensible, which again is terrible. It's like if, if, hmm, this is, I'm never allowed to be on the radio. Yeah, no, that's a given. Because <laughs> I can't tell people to fuck off or use other... Certain colorful language. Uh, so many, tr- so very true. Even here, we're just kind of skirting the line. Well, I haven't dropped the big one recently. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the boys quickly on the. Uh, I think it's written by programming notes. Uh, they are assigned to talk to a student council member about a bake sale. Oh man, bake sales! So, what's the typical cost for a cupcake? Corey tries to change some. Shake things up by asking about the dark side of bake sales. <laughs> While Sean merely sulks and whines. <laughs> Which, fair enough, he knows this is death. Uh, finally, they get a call where a male friend of the student council uh, girl calls up to profess his crush on her and ask her out. Corey tries to get the show back on topic, which is a dumb idea. But Sean knows a good thing when he sees it and runs with it. Good for Sean. Well, it's Sean, and Corey is just pulling a Corey. Soon, a group of girls arrive at the door to the radio room. They want to go on the radio and make dates, too. Corey and Sean renamed their new show Lunchtime Lust. One, no. Too far? Oh, no, the the title is fine. But those girls aren't going to the radio station to get dates. No. (laughs) Uh, Feeney is not pleased with Lunchtime Lust, which which he says is in bad taste. Well, what other kind of taste is there? A decent amount, but most people don't like it. He fires Corey and Sean. The boys argue with him about the First Amendment, which they clearly don't understand. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Feeney also replaces Corey and Sean with the other particular gentleman, sadly, Mr. Oh, yeah. um, 
<laughs> Ludwig? I think is his I, name? I believe so. <laughs> sure. A uh, gentleman that takes over the radio is like, well, I'll play this election. You can call in. I'm not going to listen. <laughs> Which is pretty great. Uh, Feeney says the Bill of Rights is intended for people with a, sponsor, with a sense of responsibility. <laughs> and Sean replies, if it doesn't apply to us, why do we have to learn it? <laughs> Which, good argument. <clears throat> and if it's only intended for people with a sense of responsibility, <laughs> ring up the White House, because... Um, <clears throat> anyway, mm. next, the voice talked to Mr. Turner. Although Turner is skeptical at first, he has eventually won over and promises he'll talk to Feeney on the boy's behalf. Corey's discouraged. He doesn't think Mr. Turner will have any success with Feeney on account of him being Feeney. So the boys decide to take matters into their own hands. After consulting, consulting with Alvin on the workings of the radio station, they tie up Ludwig and hijack the equipment for a pirate broadcast. Fair. On the air, they are um, revolutionary, describing themselves as rebels and encouraging the students to dance in the halls instead of going to class. It's actually bad timing because um, Turner just basically convinced Mr. Feeney to give the boys a second chance, and now both teachers are enraged. After Sean slips up and references the mop and buckets, Feeney finds them in the janitor's closet. Feeney leaves the boys in the radio room with Turner while he attends to the poor Ludwig, who they tore, who they tied up. Uh, Turner scolds the boys and asks why they felt they had to do this. He flips the switch so that the boys inadvertently broadcast themselves, giving a hard-felt speech about how they felt like they don't fit in, and they need to be on the radio to make a name for themselves. Well, mostly Corey gives a speech, and John just shrugs and says, yeah, when Turner asks if that's how he feels too. A ton of calls come in showing the boys weren't alone. In the end, Ludwig comes back with men from the embassy to arrest them for tying him up, which is completely reasonable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the B story for the episode, Eric signs up for a bunch of magazines from Publishers Clearing House to win, a ten, to win $10 million from Robin Leach, but ultimately ends up wasting money by, by buying 26 magazines as he does not win, but their neighbor does. Oh, I love his thought process for how to win. I'll sign up for one magazine from every letter of the alphabet. That way I can't lose. Brilliant. Justin, this is our get-rich-quick scheme. This is not really... And by get-rich-quick, I mean get poor slowly. Yeah. Alrighty, so what did you all think of this episode? Yeah, on the whole, it worked out fairly good for basic premise of it. It's very clear Sean hasn't really been educated. Well, he knows okay. the first commandment. <laughs> In all fairness, neither of them know what the first amendment is. I don't think Feeney knows what the first amendment is. Mm. I don't know, he just claims that he knows. He doesn't have to. No, but the argument that you're taking away our free speech by not letting us be on the radio. That's not what the First Amendment is. It doesn't give you the right. Anyway, so do you three have anything else about this episode? Um, uh, just the end of the episode with them. It's like, it's all right if we stay in your house while we wait for them to come home. It's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. They walk out, it's like... There's nothing greater than sitting in this typical family home on their couch looking at their TV screen. This, I say, is beautiful. It's like, wow, we got to see that check written for the, our neighbor. Awesome. Jerk. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. So the next episode is By Hook or By Crook. Um... Well, Eric and Jason are planning a huge trip to Europe in the summer. Hmm. Although, Eric is failing European history. Oh. Can you point to Europe on a map? <laughs> Probably. Well, I mean, it's pretty big. I don't know if he could miss it. Hmm. I think it would just be the question of if he points to a particular spot, he might say the name wrong. It's not like you're asking him to find Lithuania. I mean, like, Europe takes up a good chunk of the map. Anyway. True. Until next week, I'm Paul. 
I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.